Speaking of complaints, the government have got big spending plans and not enough cash to pay for them. And that means Labor are after your money. Now, I warned you about this weeks ago when Treasurer Jim Chalmers wrote his neo-Marxist essay about reinventing capitalism. And as is typical of the left, what they put forward doesn't really affect their friends, but it certainly targets their political foes. So take the superannuation debacle Labor have created, for example. After promising before the election not to touch super, they've been flying kites for the last week or so around massive changes to be announced in the budget. And after a bit of a backlash, they're crab walking away from what they first put out there, but it provides a great insight into their intentions. What Labor were suggesting would have actually enabled the union-led industry super funds to become even stronger. And that would have kept the stream of donations, of sponsorship, of jobs for the boys flowing Labor's way. And what about their mooted cap on your super? They're still talking about it tonight. It's a policy of class warfare. And Labor knows that imposing a limit on super will actually appeal to many people. They can understand that. We're told the average super balance is 150000 And when you hear about those with millions in super, it's only natural that you might feel a little hard done by it. But this is where the principle of what we're talking about is important. If people chip into super under the rules of the day, how is it fair that they're then penalised because the government, whomever it is, changes their mind? Now, I said the same thing when Scott Morrison was treasurer and then Minister Kelly O'Dwyer. They stuffed around with super too. So in that respect, it's bipartisan stupidity. But what gets me about this latest move is the rank hypocrisy. You see, we've got fat cat superannuants like Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister himself, Wayne Swan, head of the Labor Party, and others dissing the people who have put their own money into legal super schemes. They say they're getting unfair advantages. But here's the thing they don't want you to know. Both of these chaps and many others who are backing them in are on these things called defined benefit pensions, where it means they get a guaranteed annual payment funded by government or us, the taxpayer, really, every year for the rest of their lives. And when they die, 75% of that amount goes to their partner for the rest of their lives too. So I'm guessing here, there's been all sorts of uh, suggestions that it could be more, but my guesstimate is that Albanese is on track to get around $300,000 a year in a defined benefit pension when he retires from politics. And Wayne Swan, he would almost certainly be getting more than $200,000 a year. Now, to generate that sort of return with zero risk, no risk at all to them, it would require a superannuation portfolio valued well in excess of $5 million. But the caps that these guys want to introduce, it won't apply to them, of course, or to any other politicians or public servants on these defined benefits pension systems. And when you tackle any of them on it, the inevitable response is, but they were the rules when we started and you can't change it now. It wouldn't be fair. Well, again, I say, what hypocrites. They can change the rules about your super, but they won't do a thing that will impact their own. It's ruled by the elites for the elites. So if Labor really want to save money, they'll cut public servant super payments back to the same as the private sector because they get about 5% more every single year. It'd save over a billion dollars every year. And then they could cap the defined benefits pensions to a maximum of $100,000 a year or so. Now, they won't, of course, because they have one rule for you and another for themselves.